Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Top 5, the series where I count down something within the Star Wars universe. Recently, we've been looking at galactic conflicts and counting down the five largest space battles. Well, today we're looking at the largest galactic conflict in Star Wars Legends history, the Yuuzhan Vong War. The Yuuzhan Vong War started about 25 years after the Battle of Yavin, when an extragalactic species known as the Yuuzhan Vong invaded the galaxy with their biological ships. This conflict would completely change the face of the galaxy, killing hundreds of trillions of beings and reorganizing galactic governments. Today we're counting down the five largest battles of the Yuuzhan Vong War, and just because this war was so big, this is pretty much the five largest battles in galactic history. Let's get started. Number five is the Battle of Fondor, and you may recognize the planet Fondor because it's appearing in the new Star Wars Battlefront 2. Fondor was, in Legends and continues to be in canon, a planet home to a very large, very important shipyard. Shipyard battles are always a lot of fun. In Star Wars Legends, we've seen, for example, the Battle of Sluis Vaughn. In canon, we've seen the Battle of Quat. And they're big deals because usually shipyards are of immense importance and there's usually a fleet there. You also have the ships which are being constructed, which will sometimes join the battle, usually have space stations, things like that. There's a lot of elements at play and the destruction of a shipyard can have drastic consequences on any faction. This battle was extra fun because it involved the use of a super weapon, but we'll get to that in just a second. The Battle of Fondor came relatively early during... What are you talking about? The Battle of Fondor came relatively early during the Yuuzhan Vong War. The Vong wanted to hit Fondor to disrupt New Republic construction capabilities, and they did so with a surprise attack. With only paltry New Republic forces, much of the defending fleet was destroyed early on, and with no backup on the way, at least no New Republic backup, much of the Fondor shipyards was very heavily damaged. Hundreds of Yuuzhan Vong capital ships would remain in the sector relatively unmatched, until the Hapes Consortium, who had recently been brought into the New Republic, or at least into the aid of New Republic by Princess Leia, showed up with a fleet of their own. On Corellia, the Jedi had use of Centerpoint Station, a massive superweapon created by the Celestials. Although there was some disagreement over whether to fire the weapon or not, it was eventually fired and it did massive damage to the Yuuzhan Vong fleet. However, it also destroyed some New Republic and most of the Hapes Consortium ships. Centerpoint Station did manage to destroy the Vong's Yamosk, which is basically their version of a military brain, so the Vong would retreat. However, with the loss of many capital ships and serious damage to the Fondor shipyards, it's very difficult to call this a victory for the New Republic. Number four is more like a series of battles rather than just one particular battle. Specifically, it's the Borlias campaign. This whole battle and the events accompanying it was essentially a giant bruise created by the New Republic after the Yuuzhan Vong took Coruscant. Much of this ruse was engineered by war hero Wedge Antilles. It first started with the retaking of the planet Borlias, which had earlier been taken by Yuuzhan Vong forces. The New Republic also created a fake Star Lancer project, which was supposed to be some form of super weapon, which was to be used against the Yuuzhan Vong. The Vong sent a relatively large fleet to try to recapture the planet, including one of their gargantuan world ships. This large fleet ended up being a waste of resources. Wedge Antilles and the other New Republic members had actually evacuated the planet and were in process of evacuating the planet and had refitted a Super Star Destroyer, a famous New Republic Super Star Destroyer known as the Lusanka, into a sort of explosive battering ram. During the battle, the Lusanka was actually used to take down one of the Yuuzhan Vong's world ships. In total, besides for the Dreadnought Super Star Destroyer, this battle probably saw hundreds of capital ships and tens of thousands or thousands of fighters on each side. The New Republic managed to kill a key Yuuzhan Vong military figure and slowed what had at that point been a fairly vicious onslaught by the extragalactic species. It should be noted that before this, and really leading to this, the Yuuzhan Vong had managed to take Coruscant from the New Republic turning their capital into basically a wasteland. I'm not going to bring this battle up specifically, but I'm going to mention it during a later battle because the two are very close together. Nonetheless, the fall of Coruscant and the subsequent events pushed the galaxy to the brink of destruction. This and subsequent events would cause the New Republic to reorganize in the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances and would also cause the Imperial Remnant and most other factions within the galaxy to align on one side. One of the key battles leading to this reformation was number three on this list, the Battle of Ebak. 
The Yuuzhan Vong had finally started to take some losses in the war. One of those was, as we just mentioned, at the Battle of Borlius. With tensions rising among the Vong, the GFFA, as led militarily by a now very old Admiral Akbar, realized it was a great time to strike against the Vong. The New Republic would once again instigate a trap for the Yuuzhan Vong. The New Republic would once again instigate a trap for the Yuuzhan Vong, luring them to the planet of Ebok. The Vong attacked with overwhelming force, five entire battle groups. The initial GFFA force there was quite small compared to the Yuuzhan Vong's overwhelming numbers. However, reinforcements would soon arrive. The first set of reinforcements laid mines around the edge of the battle. The second set of reinforcements would be a massive Galactic Federation of Free Alliance's fleet, too large for even the Yuuzhan Vong's instruments to measure. The Vong would be absolutely decimated in both space and on the ground as they tried to attack the planet of Ebak. This was a massive win for the Star Wars galaxy. Not only were losses on the Vong side intense, but it also caused a rift within the Yuuzhan Vong, leading to the execution of several high-ranking Vong officials. The second largest battle came very, very late in the war and involved one of the most important planets to the New Republic. Number two is the Battle of Mon Calamari. This was important because at the time, Mon Calamari was actually the capital of the New Republic after they had lost Coruscant. This battle, along with the number one entry on the list, is essentially the defining moment of the Yuuzhan Vong War. It saw all of the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances and all of the Yuuzhan Vong forces split in two, with half going to Yuuzhan Tar and half going to Mon Calamari. The New Republic had some serious firepower at this battle, including an Executor Class Dreadnought, the Guardian, and perhaps more impressively, a Viscount Class Star Defender. Along with that were several other high tonnage Mon Calamari ships, including Mediator class cruisers and other ships of various designations. Besides for the Galactic Federation forces, Mon Calamari also had its own defense fleet along with various defense platforms on both the ground and in space. Like I said, about half the forces of each faction were at Mon Calamari at this point. The New Republic, or the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances at this point, did manage to fend off the Vong, although much of that was due to the Vong's retreat and their formation at the Battle of Yuuzhan Tar. I've mentioned Yuuzhan Tar a couple of times. You might be wondering, well, what exactly is that? Yuuzhan Tar was the name the Yuuzhan Vong gave to the planet Coruscant after their invasion and its subsequent transformation. The Yuuzhan Vong first managed to take the planet Coruscant after bombarding it with slave ships, weakening the planetary shield, and then attacking it with an overwhelming force of thousands of capital ships. The loss of Coruscant was devastating to the New Republic, although it did see the death of Borsk Falia, which, in my mind at least, is a positive. The New Republic would later take back Coruscant and defeat the Yuuzhan Vong once and for all at the final battle of the war, the Battle of Yuuzhan Tar. This is also the largest battle in Star Wars history, and saw every faction in the galaxy, including the Imperial Remnant, the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, the Jedi, the Chiss, the Hapes Consortium, basically anyone else who had starships available, come together to fight a common enemy. It's impossible to count how many ships would have actually been in this battle, most likely tens of thousands on each side, with many dreadnoughts and cruisers and high tonnage ships involved. Just imagine A-wings and Y-wings flying alongside TIE fighters, Imperial Star Destroyers and Mon Calamari cruisers fighting side by side. Even Executor Class Super Star Destroyers, Mon Calamari Cruisers, Chiss Ships, Smugglers Alliance Ships, everything coming together to fight one common enemy. After the approach of the living planet Zenoma Sakat and various victories on the ground, the Yuuzhan Vong would eventually surrender, but not before killing tens of thousands of pilots, thousands of ships, and countless soldiers on the ground. Someone in one of my previous videos mentioned that this is a lot like the final battle in the Mass Effect trilogy. All factions coming together for a desperate last stand. I think that's a pretty good analogy, except in this case, the war had ravaged the galaxy for many years. Surely with everyone coming together and with a newfound unity, there would be no war in the galaxy and peace would exist for the rest of time. Right guys? 
right? I definitely won't have to do any more of these top five videos on wars after the Yuuzhan Vong because I'm gonna guess that after this point, everyone just held hands and got along. Anyways guys, that is all for today's episode of Star Wars Top 5. Let me know down in the comments whether you liked this list, which galactic conflict you'd like to see me do next, and just any other ideas for videos that you guys might have. Thank you so much for watching guys. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.